Okay, let's go back to a simpler case. Let's balance this equation again. I think we got one, three, and two. Mm -hmm. Let's say that we start with uh, 50 moles. 50 moles. And 50 moles. Now let's say that we react One of the most useful tools for chemistry problems is start change end tables. Most students don't make nearly enough use of these start change end tables. So you write the balanced equation and then you write start change end. These numbers here are our starting amounts. Now, already here, we can start to see a common student mistake. Um, so in this problem, how much nitrogen gas are we starting with? 100 moles. Or no, 50 moles. Yeah, 50 moles. Are we starting with 50 moles or are we starting with one mole? According to the start change end table. Well, according to the table, we're starting with 50 moles. But the point I wanted to make is many students misinterpret these numbers as your starting amounts. The stoichiometric coefficients are not the starting amounts of the compounds. They're just hypothetical amounts. Maybe it helps to think about the sandwich equation. So this is a true equation for how to make a simple sandwich, right? You can take two slices of bread and one slice of salami, and that'll give you one sandwich. So this is a true equation for how to make a sandwich. All right, so let's say, that these, uh, let's say these are the real sandwiches that I always make for lunch. I make these very simple sandwiches. Now suppose I asked you, how many slices of bread do I have in my cupboard? How many slices of bread do I have in my cupboard? <clears throat> well, that's a trick question. The answer is, you have no idea. This equation doesn't mean I have two slices of bread in my cupboard. This is just hypothetical. This is saying that if I want to make one sandwich, that will require two slices of bread and one slice of salami. It's not saying that I'm actually making one sandwich. I could be making two sandwiches or three sandwiches, or maybe I'm skipping lunch and I'm not making any sandwiches. These numbers are just hypothetical. They don't actually tell you about the actual starting amounts, but that's a common mistake that students fall into. Um, in fact, if these were dozens, then I could even have fractions. Um, I might just, uh, so I might have a fraction of a dozen of sandwiches. Okay, so these are not the starting amounts. If you're just given this equation, you don't know the starting amounts. It's not until I actually wrote down these numbers that you knew the starting amount. So here I'm just telling you, I'm starting with 50 moles of this, 50 moles of this, and 50 moles of this. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe uh, we should stick with the sandwich equation, though, for a second. So let's say that we start with 50 slices of bread, 50 slices of salami, and 50 sandwiches. So we're supposing that I've already made a lot of sandwiches. Now let's suppose that I use up 
eight slices of bread to make more sandwiches. So notice that the change row has to have a sign, plus or minus. So should this sign be plus or minus? Plus or plus, minus. If I use up bread, am I going to use up salami or make salami? In order to use up bread, I have to combine that with the salami, right? So if this is a minus, this has to be a minus as well, because they're both on the starting material side. And what should this change be? Plus or minus? Plus, if I'm using up bread, that's because I'm making sandwiches. So if these are both negatives, this has to be a positive. So we have to put the signs on the change row. These are supposed to be separate columns. OK, so generally everything on the left will have the same sign, and that will be opposite to the sign on the right. Now, if I'm using up eight slices of bread, how many slices of salami, salami am I going to use up? Four. Not eight. That's the key. Um, so these numbers don't have to be the same as each other, which is a common student mistake. How did you figure this out? Using the stoichiometric coefficients. I said the stoichiometric coefficients were no good for figuring out the starting amounts. So what are they good for? They're good for figuring out the changes. Um, basically, this is telling us we are using twice as much bread as salami. These coefficients are telling us we have to use twice as much bread as salami. We don't have to use two slices and one slice, but we do have to have this number be twice as big as this number. So this number has to be twice as big as this number. And then, how many sandwiches am I going to make? Four. Four or eight? Four. Good. All right. So you stood, stood your ground. That's right. Um, these two numbers are the same, which means that these two numbers should be the same. Every time we use one slice of salami, that allows us to make one sandwich. So if we use four slices of salami, that should allow us to make four sandwiches. Or you could just as well have used this number, because we know that when we use um, this number, it should be twice as big as this number. So the amount of sandwiches we produce should be half the number of slices of bread that we use. And of course, that's just our common sense, um, because we have two pieces of bread for each sandwich. The number of sandwiches is half the number of pieces of bread. So we're using a common sense example, so we have some intuition. All right, so one big lesson that we're getting here is these numbers don't have to be the same as each other. Of course, these numbers don't have to be the same either. I just chose to pick them to be the same. It's perfectly possible, though, that in your cupboard, you could have different numbers of bread and salami to start with. All right, how do you get these numbers? Well, you take one number and you use the stoichiometric coefficients to get the other numbers. That's a very common stoichiometry problem. So how many slices of bread will we end up with? 42. Right. And how many slices of salami? And how about over here? 54. OK. So now we can see why this is called a start, change, end table. Uh, it's a really good habit during the test to actually write this out. Um, it's tempting during the test because there's so much time pressure to try to do things in your head. But it's a really good idea to actually write down these start, change, end tables. It helps you avoid a lot of mistakes. And also, on top of that, even if you don't do this every time during the test, you should be doing this every time in your practice. Because the, the act of writing these down in your practice will help you to digest the material better. So that maybe when the test goes around, you won't need to write these down every time. But when you're practicing, you should write these down every time so that you're internalizing the logic. Many people, when they do problems, don't even distinguish clearly in their minds between the stoichiometric coefficients, the starting amounts, the changes, and the end. So making this table forces us to see, realize that there's four different types of numbers that we're dealing with, which we might not even realize otherwise. So the problems are going to try to get us confused and try to confuse these numbers with each other. But they're all different types of numbers. Notice that only the change numbers get signs. Because obviously the start and the end would always be positive or zero. So, but we always have to put a, a sign on the change. This is a very useful type of technique um, to use on lots and lots of different types of stoichiometry problems. Solution problems, acid-base problems, redox problems, um, lots and lots of problems we're going to use this general approach. All right, I think it was pretty obvious here that if this was 8, this should be 4, and this should be 4. But how would you work that out mathematically? Well, you would work it out like this. You would say we have 8 slices bread, and then you would do unit conversion. Um, what? Uh, Two slices for one salami. Right. Now we have to figure out what to put on the top and what to put on the bottom. Which right. unit should we put on the bottom? The bread. Yeah, slices bread. And on the top, well, if I'm trying to figure this out, I could put slices uh, salami. Uh, what number goes down here? And what number up here? One. Just like you had said earlier. That's right. So again, this is what the stoichiometric coefficients are good for. 
The purpose of the stoichiometric coefficients is to give you these conversion ratios. Um, here I'm not interpreting this in moles. I could say two moles of bread and one mole of salami, but that would be a heck of a lot of sandwiches. Um, but it is, it's the same general principle. Here we're working with slices rather than moles. Um, okay, so again, we know the stoichiometric coefficients don't give us the starting amounts. What do they give us? They give us the conversion ratios that we're going to use to solve stoichiometry problems. That's why we have to balance the equation before we can do stoichiometry, because until we balance the equation, we don't know what the stoichiometric coefficients are. So here the slices of bread would cancel, and you would end up with four slices of salami, which is exactly what we had figured out before in our heads. 